Howdy folks, welcome to another in uh, Period 6 is 101 um, Geology and Mining Terminology series. Today we're going to be talking about types of gold. Uh, we've got a lot of comments, and I was actually thinking about this last night, is that people say, where's the gold at? Show us something. We want to see the end result. Um, don't blame you. Um, Americans, we don't like soccer. Why? Because it ends in ties. If there's not a winner, it might as well be communism. It's, it's a horrible thing. Um, we want to know... Where's the beef? At the end of the day. Um, we want to see who's the winner, because... Americans love a winner. There you go. Um, so where's the gold at? Why don't we show you that gold? Well, here's a little photo right here of some of the gold that we do have. This came out of the Goodyear mine, um, which we're now calling the, um, the tire pain project. We slash so many tires going up there. The tire pain project, the Goodyear mine, this comes from the right fork of the shade at it. We had a lot of little steps there. Um, don't worry too much about what's going on behind me on the board. We'll get to that here in a moment. Momentarily. Um, so we've touched before on, on this a little bit. Um, what's the difference between load versus placer? Load gold is what we mine. It's the, the gold that's still inside the rock that has to be crushed and extracted and recovered. Placer gold is what you see, um, like the old 49ers painting gold at the side of the, um, the river there, or what you see in the show Gold Rush. You know, they process dirt to get the gold that's in there, and that's it. We break the rocks um, to get the gold out. The reason there's not a load gold show, per se, is that it's not as exciting. There's no payoff at the end of the day. Where's the beef? Um, you don't get to see a lot unless you pour it. Pouring a gold bar is about as fun as watching, you know, pulling a cake out of the oven without all the fun ingredient parts and the um, all that. Um, there's a lot of nasty chemicals involved in it too. We're gonna get to that though. So when people ask us, show us, we wanna see the gold. We wanna see the free gold or the free mill gold. Where's the beef? That terminology um, for the layman is different than the industry terminology. Free mill gold, here. Um, free mill is any gold that can be recovered um, without pre-oxidation of the ore. Um, what that means, uh, starting going back to the old days, um, once you crushed your ore, whether for whatever method you use, if it was a Chilean mill or the Aerostray, like I have a video on the Aerostray that we found, um, if it was an Aerostray Chilean mill, um, just pounding it with other rock, whatever you were doing, um, you could then take that crush ore, run it over your, you know, pan it out, do whatever they did back in the old days, to get the gold out, and then you ran the rest of that ore um, and the gang across a mercury table. And that's usually a, a flat steel table or a copper table of iron that has a layer of, of mercury on it that's been put on there. And as that ore went across there, the mercury will pull the copper and the, um, Pulls copper up pretty strong, I think. Yeah, it sticks to it. Pulls the copper, it pulls the gold into the mercury itself. Then that mercury is scraped off by hand. Very time consuming and labor intensive process. Um, the mercury is then burned off and the gold remains behind as a little kind of a, a sponge looking thing. Not so good to breathe. It make you very bad in the chest. You <coughs> cough in your lungs. But that's when we do it. And that was called free mill still. You can mill it, you get it to mercury, you pull it out. That's what we had. That has changed since the, I guess the 1890s when cyanide kind of started to become more popular in uh, New Zealand, Australia, and they moved over to the United States and really got kicked off after the turn of the century. Um, free mill then took on another terminology, a different basis in terminology. Free mill then became what you can pull out by using cyanide. Good old CN or HCN or NACN, whatever, well, HCN is a gas, more like that. But you can use cyanide to pull the gold out. Uh, into solution, then you process solution to get the gold out the back end of it, which we won't go into until later. Uh, different video. So when people say, show me the free mill gold, really what they're meaning to say is, show me the macroscopic free mill gold. What can I see without the use of a microscope or a hand, hand lens, something that I can see that's visible there? Um, uh, what's his name? Jeff Williams has a lot of videos where he goes in, breaks up gold, processes it, shows a little bit of it. In the end, you can see that little string of gold in the bottom of it. Um, looks great, great payoff. Love to see those videos. Um, but that leads us to what ratio of that ore 
is macroscopic that we can see, and what part of it is microscopic. Now, what's that, what's that fraction look like? Without an assay, you just don't know. You don't know how many ounces per ton or grams per ton of gold you have. Um, in so far that, people say, all right, well, you panned out the gold. I see a little bit of string there. There's nothing a lot there, not much to get excited about. When in fact, all the microscopic gold that you cannot see might be three, four, five ounces of the gold that you just can't see. It's all microscopic. It's there. It needs gravity separation, something a lot more efficient than panning, um, to process to get the cyanide to pull that gold in solution, which we can process it later or pull it out later for recovery. So macroscopic can be insignificant to grossly insignificant to really pretty. Um, the reason you don't see a lot of jewelry made out of gold um, inside the rock, you know, you've seen, everybody's probably seen gold that's inside the quartz, beautiful gold quartz stringers inside of beautiful white quartz. That stuff is worth more as a specimen than it is for the gold content because it's so freaking rare. Hardly ever see it. Um, I think I mentioned this before that the one of the mine superintendents and a geologist who ran the Octave mine here in uh, near Phoenix, in, out on Stanton, near Rich Hill, um, worked for that thing for 10 plus years and he never saw visible gold in his specimens. Um, we're talking about processing hundreds of thousands of tons of ore, pulling out tens of thousands of ounces of gold, never saw gold. Macroscopic in this case was insignificant, didn't matter. What was important was this was all free mill. Well, actually it wasn't. We'll get to that. The X portion of this was irrelevant. This should be a fraction, it should be a ratio. It was all the microscopic that they were picking up that was making that mine run the way it was running. Now there's also um, additional macroscopic, microscopic. There's also refractory gold. Um, that's this one right here. Um, that is gold that generally cannot be processed by crushing it and putting it into cyanide. Generally, you can't get that gold out. In this case, what it means is like, you've got a gold particle in there that you can hold here. All right, here we go. Sit. You get, this is my gold particle. What it is, it's trapped inside of a sulfide ions or sulfide grain or arsenic or iron pyrite. So you got arsenal pyrite, iron pyrite, some kind of sulfur. It's holding that gold grain and it's completely blinded to cyanide. Cyanide can't get in and pull it out. Now what you have to do there is you have to roast it or oxidize it in some manner um, to get that to open up, spread out, and now the cyanide can get in there into that matrices, get that gold particle, and pull that gold particle out in solution for recovery. Now there is generally some refractory ore or some refractory portion of most ores that are left behind today that we're working with. Um, I know we have arsenal pyrite and some calcopyrite probably some iron pyrites too up at the uh, Goodyear mine there. Found some uh, arsenal pyrite yesterday, as a matter of fact, in one of the uh, mine dumps there. Um, so there is some portion of refractory. Generally speaking, you don't count refractory as part of your free mill. However, there's a portion of it you may be able to grind small enough. There's a cost benefit ratio there to, to, to move out or to, to analyze. That will then give you the ability for some cyanide to hit that um, gold particle. Uh, so that's really what you want to look at though, is what's your ratio here? What's your free mill versus refractory? Sometimes B might be the whole nine yard. You can't get anything out without roasting the whole ore or ox oxidizing it. Bio-oxidation being preferred method for us. You cannot get ore out without the oxidation portion of it. Others, most of the free mill, or really what you want is free mill um, that we can get to. So that ratio, these ratios then are really tells you how you're gonna process your ore. Um, so when folks, I mean, the bottom line of this is when folks ask me, you know, where's the gold at? Where's the, where's the payoff at? Well, microscopic, like in this picture, might be next to nothing compared to the microscopic that you can't see. Um, here's a picture of an ore right here. This came from um, the Goodyear mine. Not in one of the adits, but we found ore that's exceptionally close to it in the right fork of the shade adit. This, this ore right here is exceptionally rich. I won't 
tell you how much, but it uh, it floored us when we got the assay back. Grind it, crush it, pan it, no gold. Can't see it. It's all microscopic. You would not believe how much gold is in that, that rock that you cannot see. Now another one, this came from a different mine in the Goodyear, I mean Goodyear, in the tire paint project. Um, this ore carried um, 0.6 ounce per ton gold, 28 ounces of silver per ton. Now silver is a little different from gold. It's kind of, it doesn't look the same. It tarnishes, it can be, well, look at that rock. Do you see anything in there that even remotely looks like silver or silver oxides? There's no gray, really gray strings of that that you see in there. That's 28 ounces per ton of rock and you can't see silver. You can't see gold in that. So really in this portion, again, really microscopic is a gross portion of what we're dealing with. It's the stuff you can't see. Now, if I could give you numbers to show what kind of or values we're talking about, it would help, but we're not really released, ready to release those, that information at this point. Uh, let's just say that, uh, yeah. Hey, hot dang it, Bobby. That's a lot, of, a lot of money in them rocks, boy. Hot dang it, you need to get that gold out, boy. So this microscopic really is more important without quality assays. You won't know any of these ratios. You won't know what you're dealing with. Um, that's the important thing. You've got to know how much you're starting with. If you don't have your assays right, everything down the line will get messed up because you never know what your ratios are as you process from the gravity to cyanide to your final recovery to what you're losing. Without an assay, you can't establish any of this. Anyway, so that's the big difference between, between gold types. Um, low versus placer. When you ask me, where's the gold at? Really what you're asking me for is macroscopic free meal. True free meal is everything you can get out through chemical processing without oxidation. That's it for now. Um, I will be, hopefully we'll be in touch with some more stuff here. We might go over some of our flotation, I mean our processing circuit fairly soon. We've got, um, I wanna give you all a kind of a, a heads up of where we are in the process. I mentioned it in the introductory video, but I want to show you all a step-by-step -step process of how we're going to establish ourselves as the company, what we're doing as far as, you know, we're in the exploration phase, um, doing some testing and how we're going to get from that to full production and from that full production on this mine to subsequent mines as we hopefully move up in the world. Um, so we'll go over that here probably in a future video. But until next time, we're done. Um, hope to see you around. You can hit like and subscribe. You don't have to. You don't want to. Not going to break my heart. Uh, but hopefully you stick around as we go through some more of the process and as we build up period six. Thank you, folks. Until next time. Bye-bye.